a happy reunion tonight for thousands of Navy and Marine families. The Macon Island Amphibious Ready Group returned to San Diego today after a seven month deployment. News 8's Brandon Lewis shows us how some of them welcome back their sailors. Shannon and Jesse, these are always emotional events. We had a lot of babies that were born during the time that they were deployed, and of course, a lot of missed family events. But this also proved to be a more unique deployment because they were one of the first carrier groups to give out the COVID-19 vaccine. This is the first time Keith Ratliff is meeting his new son after a nine-month deployment. I'm happy to be back at my son, got my wife here. It's amazing. It's an amazing feeling to be back. I can't believe I was out there for months. I know it's hard on her, too. It's hard for a long time. His wife, Julie Post, gave birth to King in February. Fortunately, the USS San Diego was close to land so he could watch through his phone. The end goal was him coming home, so that was something to look forward to. Um, that's basically what kept me going. You know, being a mom, you don't get breaks. You got to push through no matter what. So that was also what helped me. His wasn't the only birth while at sea. We did a one. <laughs> As new dads happily traded their bags for new babies. Just excited to meet her and can't wait to get back. Even those who were born before the deployment were excited for the happy reunion. Devion Ware's daughter now walks and talks. She could not do all of this when she was uh, before I left. So it's good to see her walking and, and saying words. They grew up so fast. The Macon Island Amphibious Ready Group set sail in October, but COVID rules meant they actually said goodbye to their loved ones months earlier. They also visited fewer ports while at sea and stayed busy, keeping terror groups at bay in Somalia and the Middle East and training with allies. The group also made history as the first to administer the Moderna and Johnson & Johnson vaccines at sea. We took a, a very well-developed training plan and then had to really just kind of rewrite it uh, immediately prior to deployment. And in effect, that extended the deployment what would have been six months to closer to eight months that uh, people were away from their loved ones. But these sailors would say that's life in the military and makes days like these even sweeter. It's good to be back. It's hey, mine. it's mine. good to see them. I'm so happy to see them. Uh, it's been a long, it's been a long time. It's been a long time. And while many of the sailors are looking forward to spending that quality time with family, there are others who will remain on the ship as it stays here at home port for the time being. Jesse and Shannon. Brandon, thank you. Good to have them home. Yes, and yes. I love that the families were able to actually go and welcome them home because yes. there's been so many restrictions on that. I love those stories. Yes, as I was just saying to, to you during the break, imagine going to sea as a husband, coming home back as a dad. I know, it's so exciting. That's priceless, priceless. Meanwhile, the U.S. Navy is honoring a Filipino sailor and recipient of the Medal of Honor. Today, local leaders held a ceremony remembering Telesforo Trinidad, a Navy fireman who rescued his crewmates after an explosion on the U.S. Says San Diego. It's part of an effort to petition the Navy to name a ship after Trinidad. He received the highest military award, the Medal of Honor. And in Navy tradition, a recipient would have a ship named after him. And this happened in 1915. And here we are in 2021, and we have not had a ship yet named after him. Trinidad is the only service member of Filipino descent who has received the Medal of Honor. Well, moments ago here on CBS 8, it was a performance that will be remembered forever as one of San Diego's own becomes the oldest major winner in PJ history. Our John Howard has more on Phil Milkelson, lefty himself, and his incredible victory at the PGA Championship in South Carolina. John. Thank you to a historic performance by Phil today, but the way things started, we weren't so sure it was going to happen. Phil started the day with a one-shot lead, but was instantly down a stroke after he bogeyed the first hole. But he found a groove. Here at number five, he takes it out of the bunker and into the hole. Phil eventually built a five-stroke lead. He would hang on down the back nine, surviving not only the players challenging, but the huge crowd as he approached 18 green. The likes we haven't seen since well before the pandemic. He putted out to win by two strokes, gave his brother and caddy Tim a long hug and is now the oldest player ever by nearly two years to win a major golf championship. I mean, this is just an incredible feeling because I, I just believed th that it was possible, but yet everything was saying it wasn't. And I, I hope that um, 
others find that inspiration. It might take a little extra work, a little bit harder effort to maintain uh, physically or maintain the, the skills, but gosh, is it worth it uh, in the end? And I, I'm uh, so appreciative to be holding this Wanamaker trophy. This is Mickelson's sixth major championship win. Only 11 players have won more. He joins Nick Faldo and Lee Trevino at that number. I'll have more highlights, more sound coming up later in our sportscast. Shannon and Jesse, let's go back to you now. All right, John, making San Diego proud. Plans to change a state law allowing solar panel owners to sell electricity back to utilities is drawing heat from renewable energy advocates. Meanwhile, right now, solar owners are guaranteed net metering will be stable for 20 years after installation. AB 1139 proposed by San Diego Assembly member Lorena Gonzalez would cut that to 10 years and remove a mandate that utilities promote the growth of rooftop solar. Critics say it will take away an incentive for homeowners considering solar. Well, if you have solar panels at home, they're working overtime today to soak up all of that mm -hmm. sunshine out there. Fingers crossed it'll stick around. The man himself, meteorologist Sean Stahl here with a look at your microclimate forecast. Uh, good evening, Jesse and Shannon. Yeah, what a beautiful day it was today. And, and Shannon and I were talking about this, Jesse, how it well basically it was sunny from the get go and with that our temperatures warmed up quickly the May gray June gloom has kind of taken a back seat at least for the weekend here and the good news is it looks like this is going to stick around if you're a sun lover and warmer temperature person uh, that's good news however the rainfall totals is a disaster uh, we're I'm going to call it five inches below with that warmer temperatures though we're seeing some pretty steady winds here anywhere from about 10 to 11 15 miles per hour over much of the county so a nice steady sea breeze keeping those temperatures very mild as we take a look at tomorrow and on into the first part of the work week high pressure continues to build in so we stay warmer than average 73 74 and then a series of low pressures dig down by the time we get to Wednesday and Thursday that'll cool things off from the coast to the inland microclimates look at these mid 80s for tomorrow and tons of sunshine inland the onshore flow will return ever so slightly on Tuesday and then that low affects us in the inland areas I'll explain all this in more detail in just a bit. All right, thanks, Sean. A North County brush fire that disrupted travel on I-15 for much of the day yesterday is now 80% contained. The fire started just before noon near Deer Springs, five miles north of Escondido. Firefighters on the ground and in the air knocked it down after it had spread to about seven acres. Southbound I-15 was shut down for hours and only two lanes were open overnight. All lanes have since reopened. Cal Fire investigators say a faulty catalytic converter started the fire. Gunfire at an overnight party at a Carlsbad resort ended with one man in the hospital and another man behind bars. It was reported just after two this morning at the Marbrisa Carlsbad resort. A 32 year old man with a gunshot wound was taken to the hospital. He's now in stable condition. Witnesses led police to a suspect 19 year old Bernardo Vasquez from Mississippi. He's now in the Vista jail facing firearm charges on $15,000 bail. And one person was killed overnight in a crash at the San Ysidro Port of Entry. It happened around 2 a.m. on southbound out 5 past the Camino de la Plaza. CHP says the driver, who was alone in his car, came into the controlled traffic lanes too fast, hit a barrier, and landed on its roof. No other injuries were reported. It's the second fatal crash at the border checkpoint since December. Thousands of San Diegans rallied downtown, demanding the U.S. government stop aid to Israel. Protesters gathered outside the federal building this afternoon, chanting and marching. This comes days after a ceasefire was announced between Israel and Hamas. Stein, green, green, In a statement released on Friday, the group Stand With Us, which supports Israel, said this is a crisis all people across the political spectrum must urgently confront without blaming the other side.